Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Xinjiang, and I'm going to present you my battery technology research, which is kindly sponsored by Dark Technologies Limited. And this research will focus on the feasibility analysis of repurposing EV batteries for the battery energy storage systems. Battery energy storage systems, or BES, has been increasingly recognized as a crucial technology for the future power systems. And as Richard already mentioned in his presentation, BES are also uh, expected to be widely adopted in New Zealand. Compared with other energy storage technologies, batteries enjoy fast loading costs and improving performance. They possess better flexibility, leave smaller footprints, especially in comparison with pumped hydro. They can also be deployed quickly as it only takes uh, several months for development and construction. But more importantly, baths are suitable for multiple applications and can thus generate value, uh, numerous value streams. As shown in this figure, there are various uh, energy storage applications with power requirements range from several kilowatts to hundreds of megawatts. The operation duration also varies from several seconds to several months. Some of the applications will be used to stabilize the grid, such as volt uh, voltage and frequency control, while others are re related with bulk energy storage, such as energy arbitrage and seasonal interseasonal storage. As we can see, pumped hydro, flywheel, supercapacitors, and other energy storage uh, technologies are only suitable for a limited number of applications. Uh, in comparison, batteries cover multiple applications, uh, especially those that are related with renewable integration and ancillary services. This means batteries can contribute most to the global transformation towards low carbon and resilient power systems. Well, currently, lithium ion batteries dominate the best market. This figure demonstrates the market share of battery energy storage from 2011 to 2016. The annual battery storage capacity additions are shown in the curve through the right vertical axis. The share of capacity additions by different technologies are also reviewed in columns on the left axis. It is clear that the share of lithium ion has, in, has increased dramatically from 30% to 2012 to nearly 90% in 2016. And the accelerated growth of the capacity additions from 0 0.25 gigawatt in 2011 to 1.62 gigawatt in 2016, again, confirms the huge popularity of lithium ion. Well, the increasingly popularity of lithium ion batteries is in some way driven by the declining cost. But besides costs, lithium ion batteries are also popular due to the performance flexibility and versatility of applications. And this is achieved through a wide range of different chemistries, different chemistry com configurations. In this table, the safety, energy density, power density, cycle life, and round trip efficiency of several lithium ion chemistries are compared with that of the two other commercially available battery technologies, which are sodium sulfur and flow battery. Lithium nickel manganese cobalt, or NMC, are the most widely used lithium ion chemistry. As we can see, they demonstrate well-balanced performance characteristics in terms of energy, power, and cycle life. Lithium ion phosphate, or LFP, is outdated for EVs due to low energy density. However, they have become increasingly popular for energy storage. The move towards LFP is driven by the higher safety, higher power density, better cycle life, and lower prices <coughs> compared with NMC chemistries. Lithium, ion, uh, lithium titanic, titanium oxide, or LTO, are also widely adopted for energy storage, uh, although they are very expensive, and the energy density is even lower than LFP. Despite that, the safety, power density, lifespan, and also extreme temperature performance of LTO outperform all the other lithium ion chemistries. Well, in general, all types of lithium ion batteries have high round trip efficiency rated from 92% to 96%. And this is significantly higher than that of 
other battery chemistries, including sodium sulfur and flow batteries. Another major drawback of the sodium sulfur and flow batteries is the low power density. And this is clearly reviewed through a survey of more than 30 commercially available best projects. In this figure, these best projects using different chemistries are compared. Each of the best projects is plotted as a single dot on a rhythmic, rhythmic scale with energy on the horizontal axis and power on vertical axis. The battery chemistries are shown in different colors. The power energy ratios uh, can be considered as the charge discharge rate or C rate for short. Uh, they can decide whether a certain application is a high power one or a high energy one. And they are demonstrated through a series of uplink lines that run in parallel. On the left side, we have high C rates of up to six, and they go all the way down to one six uh, to the right side. It is reviewed that these three commercially available Lismine chemistries, namely NMC, LTR, and LFP, are all suitable for both high and low C rate applications. In comparison, sodium sulfur and flow batteries are only used for low C rates commercially. By investigating the exact application of each project, it can be clarified that the C the high C rate applications are mostly used for ancillary services, and the low C rate ones are used for renewable integration, load shifting, and others. Well, this indicates that while lithium ion chemistries are well rounded, sodium sulfur and flow batteries are not economically suitable for certain applications. After verifying the advantages of lithium ion chemistries for energy storage. EV battery repurposing can be then considered. But besides the right chemistry, what are the merits of EV battery repurposing? Well, the most obvious reason is the significantly reduced initial cost. And this is particularly important when we know that most of the best projects currently are still not economic. According to various sources, Batteries normally account for over 50% of the whole system cost. Even though lithium-ion batteries are getting cheaper and cheaper due to the rapid ramp up of EV manufacturing in recent years, however, batteries for BAS are still over 50% more expensive than that for EVs. In comparison, repurposed EV batteries cost only about half the price of new EV batteries. And as shown in this figure, even we assume that the other costs will remain the same. The standalone storage costs per kilowatt hour will still enjoy a 25% decrease. Well, the second reason is that with 80% of the capacities left, EV batteries are still suitable for stationary use. As shown in this figure, the battery degradation curve is shown and with time on the horizontal axis and the battery capacity on vertical one. As we discussed earlier, when choosing certain best applications, the maximum discharge rate can be significantly lower than that of the EV usage. Besides, the load profile can also be more regular and predictable as it can be programmed and monitored. As a result, the degradation curve of the battery capacity probably gonna be decelerated and repurposed batteries can just, can just be economically used for a long period of time before they are recycled. Well, the third reason is regulation. Many regulations and standards that facilitate the EV battery repurposing have been published recently throughout the world. For example, according to the Chinese regulation, EV battery repurposing is encouraged through the below listed requirements. First of all, EV manufacturers are demanded to bear the main responsibility of battery repurposing and recycling. It is required that the battery structure design should be standardized, universal, and easy to disassemble. The communication protocols and interface of the battery control system should also be properly, uh, should also be shared with third parties. Besides, it is also required that 
the battery packs modules and cells should be properly coded in order to improve traceability. The United States and Canada also recently jointly published a standard for EV battery repurposing evaluation. And this greatly facilitates the sorting and grading of battery packs modules and cells, the identification of battery stubbed house, and the determination of its viability for the stationary second use. Besides these favorable factors, there are already multiple use cases available, which will provide a solid basis for the future research of battery repurposing. And last but not least, EV batteries are currently considered as negative assets because the owners will have to bear a disposal cost. But with the development of the recycling technology and also the industrial structure change of the recycling industry, which we have already witnessed, the, these batteries might become positive assets in the foreseeable future. To summarize, in New Zealand, there are both opportunities and challenges for EV battery repurposing. First, on, first, uh, on one hand, use EVs account for over 60% of all EVs in New Zealand market. As we can see, this is the nearest data from the Ministry of Transport. Besides, the New Zealand market is also largely ignored by international auto giants in terms of EV battery repurposing and recycling. And this lefts opportunities for domestic companies to take part. Well, on the other hand, due to this more EV volume, the availability of used EVs, uh, used EV batteries in New Zealand is still low. And one solution might be importing EV batteries, used EV batteries. However, there are also potential regulatory limitations for battery exporting and importing. The energy market access for repurposed batteries also remain uncertain. And these limitations should also be clarified. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you.